You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Our brothers and sisters, it's a great blessing to join you for this Mass on this Sunday of the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, give thanks to Bishop Fobb for inviting me to celebrate this Mass on his behalf. Uh, he's taking a few days off, so please pray for him as he takes this time uh, to um, just uh, build himself through the Lord's help back up. As we come together as God's people, we come mindful of the Lord's presence and mindful of his desire to offer us that grace of his mercy and reconciliation. So let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins and ask Jesus for his pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on and earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, you we bless you, you we, we adore you, you we glorify you. you. We, we give, give you thanks, thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, King O God, God, Almighty Father, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Son Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Son, God, Son of the Father, Father you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world have mercy on us. You, you take, take away the sins of the world, world receive our prayer. prayer. You are You're seated at the right hand of the Father, Father have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with, with the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit and the, the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel, when you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, try to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today, today you, you hear, hear his, his voice, voice harden, harden not, not your, your hearts. hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms for him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribeth, as in a day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. 
for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, our readings today speak of something that's not always easy to hear, but something that we need to hear. And that is this call to, what we call fraternal correction, which is part of the responsibility and the calling that we have to be a prophet. Remember that all of us have been anointed by our baptism to be a priest, a prophet, and a king. And a prophet is one who announces the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of God's call. And sometimes that prophetic call must be to repentance and to reconciliation. Remember that call of the prophet John the Baptist, repent and believe in the gospel, right? Belief in the gospel must always be prefigured by repentance. And so Jesus knows that even after we have accepted Christ, even after we have become a member of the church, we sometimes struggle with sin in our communities, in our families, right? We struggle with sin. I'm not telling you anything you don't know or surprising you today by this fact. We all know that we struggle with sin and that we have our brothers and sisters sometimes who struggle in their faithfulness to God and struggle with sin in their lives. And so Jesus is trying to instruct us on what is the proper way, what is the way of charity in which we are to call our brothers and sisters back when they have gone astray. The first thing that he says is that we should confront our brother and sister first alone, right? And this is huge. I remember when I was first entering seminary, a priest mentor of mine gave me some great advice and I've always kept it in the way that, that I lead. He said that you should give praise in public and you should give correction in private, right? 
And if we look out in our world, we don't always do that. And that's when we get ourselves into trouble. You know, sometimes we do need to correct someone, but it's how we correct them that, that enables us to even accomplish what we want to accomplish, which is hopefully bringing someone back to the truth and back to the Lord, right? And so we do that in private, right? Now, oftentimes as well, and, and this is part of the struggle of fraternal correction, is that oftentimes we fail to correct our brothers and sisters. And obviously there's a mentality in our world, you know, you, you hear that, uh, that popular saying right now, you do you. You worry about yourself, right? Let's just worry about ourselves, don't worry about anyone else, and we'll all be fine, right? But is that really love? Is that really the way of charity? I mean, obviously, as we look out in our society, we have social programs, we have prime, uh, crime prevention campaigns, we have drug prevention ca campaigns, we have things to help people to stay away from sin. But sometimes when people in our sphere of influence are struggling or, or on a destructive path, sometimes because we lack fortitude and we lack courage and we lack charity, we stay silent when we need to, in love, speak out to a brother or sister who needs to recognize that their ways are not leading them to happiness and to the Lord, and we need to, in love, in charity, draw them back to the truth. Then Jesus says that they don't listen, then go to two or three other brothers, right, and allow them to come together, and that way you'd have witnesses, again, to call people to the truth. Now, we all know the reality of gossip in our, in, our, in our life, right? And especially as Cajun people, sometimes we really struggle with gossip. Um, if you've ever been to St. Joseph Abbey, where uh, a lot of the priests, myself included, go to college seminary, in the apse of the church, in the sanctuary of the church, there is um, these demons that are painted and they represent the seven deadly sins. In the middle is, is Satan himself. Because they're talking about, you know, something that Benedictines are always aware of, of, of spiritual battle, right? We are, we are at war with these, with these uh, seven deadly sins, right? And so they have these demons that are representative of the seven deadly sins, but there's an eighth alcove, and that eighth alcove is representative of the sin of gossip, right? And as Christians, oftentimes we struggle with the sin of gossip. And this is how you know the difference between gossip and communal fraternal correction. When you gossip, you're simply talking about someone's faults without an intention of helping the person. You're not coming together to pray and discern how can we help this person that we love. All you're doing is coming together to talk about someone's fault simply to pass the time or maybe to inflate ourselves or, or you know, to, to just bring down someone. But if it's a fraternal correction with a group of people for someone, then it's coming together out of love to help someone to know what they need to do and to give that person the encouragement to make that change in their life. Jesus says, of course, if, if that doesn't happen, then we need to tell the church, right, the larger community. And if that doesn't happen, then we need to treat them as we would a Gentile or a tax collector. Now, that may seem harsh, but how did Jesus treat the Gentiles and the tax collectors? Jesus ministered to them. He called them. He found Matthew, the tax collector, and he said, come and follow me. No matter if someone has been excommunicated, right, formally in the church, or maybe in our own families, you know, someone is kind of outside of the family because they have failed to listen to everyone who's tried to help them and we've had to have a distance. We still need to outreach to them. And this is what Jesus says after this, All right? He talks about whenever two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them, right? If two or, th or two of you agree on earth about anything for which you are to pray, it shall be granted to you by my heavenly Father. When someone is outside of the church, when someone is outside of the community because they have failed to listen time and time again to people trying to help them and bring them back into the fullness of truth, 
right? And you know, we we we've treating them like the the, the tax collector, um, you know, and and the Gentile, you know, continue to call, and that doesn't happen. Pray, pray, and oftentimes I, I will tell that to parents who just feel like they're at their wits end. They've done everything that they could to try to reach out to their children or try to reach out to their spouse or try to reach out to someone in their life and to say never despair in the power of prayer. We just celebrated the Feast of St. Monica, a great example of a woman who in that silent perseverance continued to pray for her son Augustine and eventually she saw God answer her prayer and he was brought back into the fullness of the truth, right? We hear in that first reading, you know, God speaking to Ezekiel the same thing. He says that if someone is in a wicked way and you don't say anything and they die because of their wickedness, it's on you, right? But if you correct them and they still don't respond, it's on them and not on us. We are our brother's keeper, right? We are responsible for helping our brothers and sisters know the truth. Now, does this mean that we are responsible for every person in the world that is, that is outside of the truth and on a destructive path? No, no. But we all know that there are people in our lives that are in our sphere of influence. There are people in our lives that we have a responsibility for and are either in our own family or in our own community, in our own parish, that these are our brothers and sisters in Christ and we have a responsibility to them out of love. Now what about you know, Jesus saying, you know, before you worry about the splinter in your brother or sister's eye, you need to worry about the wooden beam in your own eye. And this is very true. In fraternal correction, if we are not also serious about ourselves trying to live in freedom and trying to live in communion with God, and so if we're just living, you know, apart from the Lord, and, but yet we're worried about everyone else, then we are like the hypocrites. We are like the Pharisees, right? That love to lay heavy burdens on others, but don't lift a finger to help them, but ourselves are far from God. Ourselves are like whitewashed tombs. So we have to do that in love. And that's what St. Paul is talking about in his letter to the Romans, right? He says, do everything in love for one another, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Love, charity, that which Jesus lives his life by, is how we know that we are doing right for our brothers and sisters and doing right for ourselves. If we really love the other, which as St. Thomas Aquinas says, if we really will the good for the other, then the way that we offer fraternal correction, the way that we live in community, strengthening one another to be about who God calls us to be, will always be right ordered. Right? And so today, as we hear this challenging message, and it is challenging, I say that myself, I don't like correcting people. I don't like challenging people. But if I'm serious about loving that person, then I'm gonna do it. In the same vein, I don't like to be corrected. <laughs> I don't like to be challenged. But if, again, if I'm serious about my own personal path of holiness, then I welcome a brother or sister who loves me to help me to know the error of my ways because sometimes we are blind to them and to help us to bring us back to the truth. Right? It's a challenging message, but it's a message that we need to hear. And we pray that in that call to love, that we may always do it, we may always do it in the way that the Lord calls us to, and be on that journey together to holiness. Amen. And so now, my brothers and sisters, together, let us offer to God our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you in trust and in confidence as we bring to you our needs. For the leaders of our church, may they speak the word of God and call us to follow closely in the ways of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayers. prayers. For civil authorities and leaders of people and governments, that they will strive to respect human life and dignity by seeking to end all attacks against life, including abortion and racial and ethnic prejudices, as well as religious, political, and economic oppressions We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayers. prayers. For minds and hearts renewed into spiritual worship, for a willingness to offer our time, resources, and efforts in sacrifices pleasing to the Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayers. prayers. Through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, may we be spared from any further loss of life and property during this hurricane season, and for those whose lives and property have been affected by Hurricane Laura, that they, will be, that they will find the assistance they need to rebuild their lives and their property. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear our prayer. For a successful school year and for all those who devote their lives to the education of our youth, especially in our Catholic schools, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayers. For hope when we are discouraged, for all who are depressed or troubled, for the strength to carry our crosses in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, confident that the way of the cross will lead us to eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. For those who have died, that they might live in the presence of the Lord for all eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place these prayers on your altar, asking you to hear them according to your most gracious will for us, through the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Blessed be be God God forever. forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed be God God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. O God, 
who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven, heaven and, and earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done done on earth as as it is is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and and forgive us our trespasses trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the the glory glory are yours now now and and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take take away away the the sins of the world, world. have Have mercy mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter enter under my roof, roof, but but only only say the word word, and my my soul soul shall be healed. healed. Prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe believe that you are present present in the most most holy sacrament. sacrament. I I love you above all things, and I desire desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Amen. Well, just a great Thanksgiving for you joining with us in Holy Mass. I thank you for your faith and your continuance in these trying times to continue to unite yourself to Jesus uh, through this act of spiritual communion and participation in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, through these beautiful means that we have through our technology. Please know of my prayer for you and Bishop Fobb's prayer for you, all the priests' prayer for you, and we look with great anticipation to the day that you may join us at the church around the Lord's holy altar. Until that day, know that you remain in my prayers. God bless you.